How's it going everybody? So in this video we got a budget mono red burn deck. It's going to cost around 60 bucks. You can definitely cut a few cards if you want to bring it down a little bit cheaper. The commander we're running is Torbran. If a red source we control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it's going to deal two additional damage. So in this deck we're going to run a bunch of cheap burn spells which is going to do additional damage because of our commander. We're going to play some cheap cards and have recurring pinging effects so we can continually do damage. And we're going to play very aggressively and target our opponent's life points because again this is a burn deck. We don't want to drag the game out and play a long game. We want to try to finish as quick as possible. Some of the first cards we have here are these three. They all have a similar effect whenever we cast a non-creature spell it's going to deal one damage to each opponent and if we do have Torbrand out it's going to be dealing three damage to each opponent every time we cast the instant sorcery and most of our instant sorcery spells do do additional damage. Whenever these three cards are tapped you're going to deal one damage to a player. Whenever we cast instant sorcery Storm Alchemist could be untapped which is great. Similar thing with Cinder Pyromancer whenever we play a red spell we can untap it. Brash Taunter is pretty awesome. He is five mana so it looks expensive on the mana curve however he's a one one with indestructible and whenever he's dealt damage we get to deal that much damage to target opponent. And we could also have other creatures fight this card. For the next card, whenever an instant sorcery spell we control deal damage to a player. We get the exit of the top card of a library, we can actually play that card. We can also tap this card and deal one damage to any target. Whenever we cast a red permanent spell, the father of instincts can deal one damage to any target. When this card's on the field, we can also use our life as a resource to pay for red mana symbols. When Goblin Chain Wheeler enters the battlefield, it's gonna deal one damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. Again, if we have our commander out, this is gonna be dealing three damage to everything. It's basically a board wipe. Whenever a tectonic giant attacks or is targeted with a spell, we're gonna deal three damage to each opponent, or we're gonna get to exit the top cards of a library and you get to play them this turn. Hellrider has haste, and whenever a creature we control attacks, it's gonna deal one damage to that player. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land, both Harsh Mentor and Immolation Shaman are gonna deal some damage to that player. When Dagger Caster enters the battlefield, it's gonna deal one damage to each opponent and one damage to each creature they control. When Fanatic of Mogus enters the battlefield, it's gonna deal damage to each opponent equal to your devotion. When Gibberish Fiend enters the battlefield, it's gonna deal one damage to each opponent. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, Witty Roastmaster is gonna deal one damage to each opponent. We do also play some cards to generate us some extra tokens, so this can be pretty lethal. Inferno Titan and Maul of Flames are kind of some top heavy cards. Sitting up both six and seven mana, they're definitely higher on the mana curve and can be cut if you want to go for a faster paced game. However, Inferno Titan's a six six can be buffed up, and whenever it attacks or enters the battlefield, it's gonna deal three damage divided as we choose among one, two, or three targets. Again, it's insane if we have Torbrand up because this is nine potential damage when we cast this card and every time it attacks. Maw Flames is a similar effect, however, I think Inferno Titan is better for this commander deck. Lightning Bolt Shock and Play With Fire are all good burn spells at instant speed. For an uncommon card, Play With Fire is a little expensive, I think this card will come down in price. Earthquake is a great card to get rid of flying creatures as well as dealing additional damage to our opponent. Fire Confluence is a little bit more versatile because it can deal damage to each creature or each opponent or destroy artifacts. Grape Shot's a good combo piece. I don't mean to keep reiterating this, but it's so important. If we have Torbrand out, Grape Shot's going to deal 1 damage to each target for every storm counter on it. So it's going to deal 1 damage which would actually be three. Then it's going to ca cast it again. So it's deal one damage again for three. So if we have a storm count of three on Grape Shot, it's actually going to be dealing nine damage total. Electric Trickery is going to deal one damage to each creature. Also, we could overload it for one extra mana, so it could potentially be a board wipe. And Dual Shot's a good way to deal some damage to creatures. Skull Crack's going to deal some damage while preventing our opponent from gaining life. And both End the Festivities and Blazing Volley is going to deal damage to our opponent. I love messing with people's lands and mana, so these cards do that job. Mana Barbs is an enchantment, making it so whenever a player taps a land for mana, it's going to deal one damage to that player. If Burning Earth is on the field, whenever a player taps a not basic land for mana, it's going to deal 1 damage to that player. If Burning Earth is a little more expensive. However, since our deck is running mostly non-basic lands, it prevents us from losing life as well. However, Mana Barbs is the more general option for any time anybody taps a land for mana, it's going to deal damage to them. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Sulfuric Vortex is going to deal 2 damage to that player, and it prevents people from gaining life. Definitely need this card in this deck. This becomes a clock for everybody in the field. Rolling Vortex is a little similar, it's going to deal 1 damage to each player during their upkeep instead. We can also pay extra mana to prevent players from gaining life, and if a player casts a spell and they didn't pay mana for that spell, this card's going to deal 5 damage to them. Later on, Combustion kind of gives our creatures and us some protection. Whenever us or another permanent we control becomes the target of an ability or an opponent controls, it's going to deal 2 damage to that player. It's not necessarily protection, but it does kind of sort of give attacks for our opponent for targeting us or creatures we control. Tectonic Reformation is going to help us draw some cards because all of our lands in our hand are going to have cycling. This deck doesn't need a lot of mana to function, so you can get rid of those extra mana cards in your hand for actually cards that might be valuable. When you cast Outpost Seed, you can say cons or dragons. Typically, you're going to want the effect of dragons. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, it's going to deal one damage to any target. Next up are some Planeswalkers. The first one, Chandra Firebrand, is going to deal damage to your opponent. Her minus two ability is going to make it so we can copy instant sorcery spells. And her ultimate it's going to deal six damage to up to six target creatures and players. The next Chandra Pyromancer is going to help us create elemental tokens, but also her minus two ability is going to let us cast an instant sorcery card from our graveyard with three mana or less. 
some other planeswalkers are Tabal. It's going to make it so our opponents can't gain life. And we get to create 1 1 tokens that when they die, they also deal 1 damage to any target. Jaya is kind of similar to our commander's effect. However, it's going to deal 1 damage instead of 2 instead. You can also use the minus 2 ability on this card to deal 2 damage to any target. Last planeswalker is actually a creature slash planeswalker. Whenever we cast a red spell, we're going to be able to untap this card. And we can also tap this card to deal 1 damage to any target. If this card has dealt 3 damage or more this turn, we get to exile it. And return under the battlefield under control, transformed. When we have our commander out, we tap this card, it deals 1 damage to target player. It technically deals 3 damage, so it can be instantly transformed into the planeswalker. The plus 1 on the planeswalker is going to deal 2 damage to any player. Her minus 2 is going to deal 2 damage to any target creature. And her ultimate is going to deal 6 damage to each opponent. And each player dealt this way, it gets an emblem at the beginning of your upkeep. This emblem deals 3 damage to you. Super awesome if you get that ultimate off. These 3 cards are all going to help us create some 1-1 one -one tokens. And these tokens are great because even though they're 1-1s, one -ones, when they deal damage, they're going to deal 2 additional damage. As weak as they are, they still pose a pretty big threat. These next cards are going to help us filter our deck and find the cards that we need. Whenever we cast a red spell, Steam Kin is going to get a plus 1 plus 1 counter. We can also remove 3 counters to get 3 red mana. If you have Sin Prodder on the battlefield at the beginning of your upkeep, we reveal the top card of our library. Any opponent may have you put that card into your graveyard and if a player does, it's, it's going to deal damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to that player. If no opponent does that, then we're allowed to put that card in our hand. So essentially, it's kind of we get a free card in our hand or our opponent's going to lose some life. And the robot's nice because it gets us on land on the battlefield and we can draw a card when it dies. Bone Crusher is an adventure card so we can cast it for the adventure. It's only 2 damage to any target and then we can play it as a creature. Chaos Warp can deal with any problem that we have as well as protect our own creatures and by force helps us deal with other players' artifacts. Anger is a little expensive and this card definitely shot up in price but it's so good. As long as it's in the graveyard, and we control mountain creatures we control have haste this card can definitely be cut since it represents 10 percent of the deck's price however the card's effect is just insane and if you do like playing red i highly recommend at least picking this card up you can essentially run it in any red deck that also runs mountains whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell gutter snipes can deal two damage to each opponent and dual caster mage can be flashed in to copy an instant or sorcery spell and Bruma helion has effect similar to what our commander has except it's only going to be dealing one additional damage instead of two storm kiln artist may seem a little expensive but the card's so good whenever we cast instant or sorcery spell we're going to get to create a treasure token and this card is going to get plus one for each artifact and treasure tokens are artifacts these treasure tokens can be tapped and sacrificed for one mana this card is definitely so good i would highly recommend adding it to the deck but if not you can add it later as an upgrade if mirage mirror is on the field you can pay two mana because it's a copy of target artifact creature enchantment or land to the end of the turn this can also be any opponent's card as well and it's at instant speed definitely gives you a lot of versatility swift of boots is a pretty standard artifact giving our creature hexproof and haste fire diamond arcane signet command sphere or some mana rocks and for some land shivan gorge is definitely needed you can pay some mana tap this and deal one damage to each opponent you can sacrifice ramnap runes and deal two damage to your opponent not as good but still pretty good and whenever dwarf mine enters the battlefield you're gonna get a free one one token ground cave can be cycled castle ember can give your creatures plus one and we're running 29 mountains there's definitely some quick upgrades i want to mention pyrohemia is great i would definitely add this card you can continue to activate the ability for one mana to deal damage to each creature and each player a little expensive but definitely good for this deck whenever land enters the battlefield zozu the punisher is going to deal 2 damage to that lands controller. Great card to burn your opponent every time they play a land, especially if they're fetching lands too. And Rampage of Frostodon is going to make it so players can't gain life. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, it's going to deal 1 damage to that creature's controller. All around some great cards that have great effects. They're still relatively within a decent budget range. So a quick overview of the deck. We play a lot of cheap burn spells to do damage to our opponent. We also play a lot of creatures with recurring pinging effects to either burn our opponent or wipe away their board. And we also want to play super aggressively target our opponent's life because again, it's a burn deck. We don't want to be hanging around this game too long. The deck works exceptionally well when the commander's out on the field, and it works okay when the commander's not. We're still gonna be burning our opponent, but we do want to end the game as fast as possible. Sometimes setting up the board, then casting your commander is more important than casting your commander, then setting up the board. This deck doesn't have a lot of protection for the commander, so that might be something worth adding to the deck. Let me know some cards you would have added to this deck down below. If you like playing Magic the Gathering, but you don't want to spend too much money, check out our other videos on the channel. We do a lot of deck techs, and we try to keep the budget of the deck relatively cheap. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have fun playing Magic. Take care.